If there's one name that sends shivers down the spine of many truckers and mechanics across the United States, it's Max Force 13. Built by Navistar between 2007 and 2015, this engine was marketed as a revolution in highway transportation. It promised power, durability, and most importantly, compliance with emissions regulations without using DEF fluid, also known as AdBlue. But what seemed like a major innovation turned into one of the biggest nightmares in the industry. The Max Force 13 became known for chronic failures, sky-high maintenance costs, and a reputation so damaged that Navistar itself faced a flood of lawsuits and multi-million dollar losses. Many truck owners reported irreparable losses, breakdowns on the road, lost freight income, and even having to replace the entire engine after just a few miles. But what exactly went so wrong with this engine? What kind of issues drove truckers insane? And why is the name Max Force still avoided by so many people in the used truck market? Stick with me in this video and I'll show you in detail why the Max Force 13 is considered one of the worst diesel engines ever made for heavy duty trucks. The Max Force 13 was launched by Navistar in the late 2000s as a bold response to the new EPA emissions regulations, the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States. Instead of following the industry's trend and adopting the SCR system with Arla 32 DEF fluid, Navistar decided to bet it all on a single horse, the EGR system, or exhaust gas recirculation. In theory, the idea was brilliant. Avoid the use of DEF and simplify refueling. In practice, a decision that proved to be very costly. Very costly indeed. The Max Force 13 is a 13 liter diesel engine, six inline cylinders, turbocharged with a cast iron block with power ranging from 370 to 475 horsepower, depending on the application. It was used in a wide variety of international trucks, such as the ProStar, Lone Star, Transtar, Workstar, and even in buses and military vehicles. In short, an engine that was supposed to power the entire country. But what was meant to be the heart of Navistar's fleet turned into the symbol of one of the biggest failures in modern automotive engineering. Problem one, EGR system, exhaust gas recirculation. Navistar's biggest mistake with the Max Force 13 was insisting on a system that was already outdated, the pure EGR system, without the help of the SCR system. While major competitors such as Cummins, Detroit Diesel, and even the problematic Caterpillar were transitioning to the use of Arla 32 DEF. Combined with SCR, Navistar decided to challenge the market logic and technical common sense. They believed they could meet the strict emission standards using only the EGR, which means the engine recirculates a larger amount of exhaust gases back into the intake, attempting to burn the pollutants again and thus reduce NOx levels. In theory, it seems viable, but in practice, the disaster was total. The Max Force 13 system generated extremely high internal temperatures, compromising lubrication, prematurely wearing out internal components, and causing abnormal soot buildup. Over time, the engine started to fail, sputter, lose power. All of this well before the expected mileage for a more serious overhaul. The EGR cooler, one of the most critical components of the system, had frequent leaks. And here comes one of the biggest dangers. These leaks were often internal, imperceptible at first glance, and allowed coolant to mix with the exhaust gases or the engine oil. The result? Overheating, multiple failures, and even completely seized engines. Imagine being in the middle of a delivery with tight deadlines and a heavy load, and suddenly the engine goes into limp mode or just shuts down. This happened with frightening frequency in trucks equipped with the Max Force 13. For many truck drivers and transport companies, corrective maintenance became routine. And we're not talking about small adjustments. There were frequent replacements of EGR valves, intake cleaners, cooler replacement, 
sensors, and, in more severe cases, full overhauls. An engine that should last over a million miles barely made it past 200,000 without causing headaches. The EGR system of the Max Force 13 is an example of engineering designed to meet environmental bureaucracy, but that ignored the reality of the road. Navistar tried to do something different and succeeded, but in this case, different meant worse. Problem two, EGR cooler leaks. If the EGR system was already a problem on its own, the EGR cooler, the component responsible for cooling the recirculated gases before they return to the engine, took frustration to a whole new level. The design of the Max Force 13 made this component especially vulnerable to catastrophic failures. What should have been an efficient cooling system turned into the beginning of a snowball effect of problems. What happened frequently was this. The EGR cooler would begin to crack internally, often in a way that was almost imperceptible. This allowed coolant to escape into the exhaust system or, even worse, into the combustion chamber. This leak created a series of consequences. The first was the constant loss of coolant with no visible external signs. The driver would only realize when the engine started to overheat or when they noticed the fluid level mysteriously dropping day after day. Secondly, this coolant entering the combustion chamber created a corrosive and unstable environment, leading to the wear of valves, pistons, and even the cylinder head. In some cases, the contamination would go directly into the engine oil, altering its viscosity and drastically reducing its lubrication capacity. The result? A motor doomed to an early death. And this wasn't an isolated problem, it was recurring. Specialized workshops started to permanently stock EGR cooler repair and replacement kits just to serve Max Force owners. And it wasn't cheap. The part alone, depending on the version, could cost over $3,000, not including labor, which often required disassembling much of the engine. For those who rely on their trucks daily, the EGR cooler became synonymous with a nightmare. You never knew when it would fail, and when it did, the consequences were rarely minor. In many reports, it was directly responsible for complete engine failures. With this history, it's no wonder that the Max Force 13 earned the reputation of a ticking time bomb. And the EGR cooler, silent and treacherous, was the fuse that ignited the destruction. Problem three, high pressure fuel pump, HPFP. Another villain in the long list of headaches caused by the Max Force 13 is the high pressure fuel pump. And in this case, the failure wasn't just common, it was destructive, literally. The function of this pump is to feed the injectors with diesel at extremely high pressure, which is essential for the efficient combustion of fuel in modern engines. But in the Max Force 13, this component was far too fragile for the demanding task. And when it failed, which happened more often than any owner would like, the damage was serious. Users reported sudden failures with a loss of pressure in the system, ignition failures, and total power loss. In some cases, the pump would simply seize while in operation, which not only shut down the engine, but also caused dangerous pressure spikes in other components of the fuel injection system. The worst case scenario, and unfortunately, the most common, was when the pump broke internally. The metal debris generated by the failure would spread throughout the fuel system, contaminating injectors, rails, lines, and even the tank. The repair almost always required a complete replacement of the entire fuel supply system. And of course, this type of maintenance was costly. A full repair could easily exceed $10,000, considering parts, labor, and the truck's downtime. Even then, many reported that the problem could return in less than a year. It's no wonder that carriers and owner operators started avoiding any unit with this engine. The risk wasn't worth it. The high pressure fuel pump, instead of being a reliable component, turned into a reverse lottery ticket, a direct invitation to mechanical and financial chaos. If the Max Force 13 
was already poorly regarded, the reputation of this pump only added more fuel to the fire. Literally, an engine that could self-destruct from the inside out, starting with a part that should deliver efficiency but only brought headaches. Problem 4. Chronic overheating. Imagine climbing a mountain pass with a heavy load, a full engine, and suddenly the alarm starts sounding. Temperature at the limit, smoke pouring out from under the hood, and the engine's power simply disappearing. This scene was routine for many drivers who trusted the Max Force 13. Overheating was one of the most serious and recurring problems with this engine. And it wasn't caused by a single defect, but by the domino effect of failures in several critical components. The exhaust gas recirculation, EGR system, for example, directly contributed. It sent extremely hot gases back into the engine, raising the internal temperature and pushing the cooling system beyond its limits. The EGR cooler, which should have helped control this, was also faulty and frequently leaked, causing the coolant to contaminate the exhaust or, worse, the engine itself. The result was a vicious cycle. More heat, more pressure, more wear. To make matters worse, the engineering of the Max Force 13's block and cylinder head didn't seem designed to handle these extreme temperatures in the long run. Many reports included cracks in the cylinder head, burned gaskets, and permanent deformations in internal components. In the most critical cases, overheating led to the complete destruction of the engine. And when overheating didn't kill the engine outright, it made it sick. Accumulated damage drastically reduced the engine's lifespan and increased oil and fuel consumption. In other words, even when it seemed like it was working, the Max Force 13 was already compromised. In the end, the failure in temperature control was the final blow. An engine already criticized for its problematic electronics, weak injectors, and poorly designed EGR still had to face its own heat, and it lost. It wasn't uncommon to see a Max Force pulled over on the shoulder with the hood open and a mechanic trying to figure out where everything started to go wrong. Spoiler, it was usually due to the heat. So, what can we conclude about the Max Force 13? Simple, it's a problematic engine that, over the years, has proven to be more of a headache than a solution for transportation companies and truck drivers. From failures in the exhaust gas recirculation system to issues with the fuel injection system and overheating, the list of defects is far from short. And the worst part, the maintenance costs are absurd, putting the economic viability of the truck at risk. Although Navistar tried to fix these problems with updates and extended warranties, the truth is that the Max Force 13 is still an engine that many prefer to avoid. The negative impact on performance, the time and money wasted in workshops, and the constant mechanical failures make it a risky choice, especially when there are more reliable options on the market. Therefore, the lesson here is clear. If you're thinking about investing in a truck, avoid the Max Force 13. There are plenty of alternatives in the market with more efficient, reliable engines, and most importantly, with a better cost-benefit ratio. If you value your time, money, and productivity, it's better to steer clear of this problematic engine. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with other drivers and business owners in the industry who may be considering a truck with the Max Force 13. Let's avoid this mistake together and look for more reliable options for the future of transportation. See you next time and remember, always do your research before investing in a truck. See you in the next video.